yes today i welcome you for the discussion on uh, ethics integrity and uh, aptitude paper which is for 250 marks and it is a major game changer in your score for the upsc uh, main examination so first i would like to share some of the important uh, topics in the ethics integrity paper as such going by the nature of the subject the paper is going to have uh, three components one is the theory part in the ethics paper you will have the theory part uh, where you have the ideas of the ideas of the moral thinkers and the philosophers not only from india but also from the world so that part uh, you have to be very well versed because most of the questions will be coming uh, relating to this uh, philosophy and uh, theoretical uh, aspects so i want you to go through at least once or twice the ideas of various moral thinkers and philosophers like plato aristotle socrates and people like john locke right bertrand russell and others and in india you have to go, get into the ideas of mahatma gandhi ji then you have uh, jyotiba phule then you have people like rabindranath tagore swami vivekananda sarvepalli radha krishnan and many more uh, personalities who we have in our country and even chanakya's uh, philosophy may also be relevant uh, with regard to the ethical values so that is one area where you need to become uh, perfect uh, very well versed with the ideas of these moral thinkers that is one area where you can score well in the ethics paper and normally most of the students coming from the non humanities background like students coming from engineering uh, medical and other technical science related courses so they'll be little bit weak as far as this uh, philosophical part of the uh, syllabus is concerned so i would like to suggest you that kindly go through the ideas of these people uh, before you get into the question paper the second aspect that you have to understand uh, with regard to uh, the uh, the paper is uh, the conceptual part you know the second component of the ethics paper is uh, various types of concepts they will ask for example human values in the very first chapter you will come across the human values so what are human values and how do how do we define human values that you need to understand uh, very clearly and each concept has to be very clear in your mind like what is justice what is equality what is compassion what is liberty what is freedom so each concept that we come across in the uh, human values you need to be very precise uh, and very accurate in understanding the concept so it is called conceptual clarity uh, which you have to improve upon by going through uh, the referred books there are so many uh, standard authors are there on the subject like uh, uh, k subbarao the retired chief secretary who has written the book on ethics paper and he has given a very good intuition and uh, analysis of the concepts uh, in his book uh, and you are all aware of that uh, very famous author uh, k subbarao retired uh, ias officer and uh, a former chief secretary of the government so that is one area where you need to be very clear cut then you, there are also concepts like attitude and aptitude and many of the students will be having confusion uh, that uh, both are more or less same but actually they are not the same they are two different concepts attitude is different aptitude is different attitude means the way you look at the things the way the angle with which you will look at the you, you look at yourself look at the environment around you look at the society look at the bureaucratic system around you so that is uh, the attitude normally attitude is uh, divided into two categories either you have positive attitude or you have negative attitude if you have positive attitude you are likely to be more ethical more moral in your approach but if you have negative attitude chances are likely that you tend to become corrupt you tend to become unethical you tend to become immoral because your attitude itself is negative so this is what you have to understand very clearly 
with regard to the attitude aspect is concerned like positive and negative and also there is one more uh, idea which you have to keep in mind is attitude is of two types one is called the individual attitude that is personal attitude okay say for example as a person what is my attitude towards the society what is my attitude towards corruption what is my attitude towards a probity in governments what is my attitude towards the fundamental rights like that but the attitude of the society attitude of the community may be slightly different it is called a community attitude or societal attitude or sometimes in psychology we use the word collective attitude so the collective attitude may be different from the individual attitude but when we decide questions on attitude we have to go by the attitude which is accepted in the society because ultimately man is a social animal as aristotle said you have to go by the values respected by the society accepted by the society recognized by the society and once it is recognized by the society automatically it becomes moral and ethical so like that at the regarding concepts you must have clarity there is also another concept like aptitude what is the meaning of aptitude aptitude means ability your capacity to know something understand something do something apply something in your actual life practical life that is called aptitude so aptitude means your capacity aptitude means capacity whether i am capable of doing uh, etc a b c or not whether i can do this work or not so if you if you are having the aptitude and here again the aptitude is of two types one is innate aptitude means the aptitude which is already there in you by birth it is called inherent aptitude latent aptitude potential aptitude different uh, words are used there which is already there with you but there is another aptitude which is called uh, acquired aptitude means all of us can acquire certain capabilities by learning by conscious learning deliberate learning systematic learning organized learning i can le learn lot of things i can learn lot of skills i can uh, learn lot of uh, capabilities which earlier i was not knowing okay so that is called acquirability the aptitude can be acquired uh, through a systematic process of uh, learning a systematic process of training a systematic uh, process of mentoring or training like that and that's the reason why so many training centers are there and you know that the ias officers are trained in masuri ips officers are trained in uh, hyderabad what is the purpose of training the purpose of training is to teach these aptitude to our bureaucrats to our civil servants that once you enter into civil service how you should behave yourself with the public with the government with the representatives of the people see these are the things which we have not taken by uh, inheritance they are not there by birth but you are going to learn them by practical conscious learning as well as training so why i explained this point for you is you must know the difference between attitude and aptitude they are not same attitude is your angle the way you look at the things is called attitude but aptitude means your capacity your ability to do certain things which are approved by the society accepted by the society and recognized in the society right then there is another small technical chapter in the paper called emotional intelligence it's there on chapter number 5 emotional intelligence so here you need to be little more careful because it is purely a psychological concept it's a pure uh, related to uh, scientific study of mind it is related to scientific study of mind in our days we were talking about uh, intellectual uh, quotient iq when i was a student like you we were told about increasing the iq how much intelligence you have it is called intelligence quotient but today the time has changed then things have changed the society has changed so today there is importance for eq 
not IQ, right? IQ means intelligence quotient, how intelligent you are. But EQ means how much of emotions you have with you, how much of emotions you have. And when I say emotions, it is again of two types. You have positive emotions, you have negative emotions. What are positive emotions? If you love the society, it is a positive uh, emotion. If you help the society, it is a positive emotion. If you feel the difficulties of the poor people, it is a positive emotion. It's called a empathy. It's called empathy. But there are also negative emotions like anger, your anger with the system. There is a negative emotion of jealousy. You are jealous of somebody, envy of somebody who have achieved something. So there are the human being as such will have so many positive and negative emotions. But in this chapter, what you have to understand is how good emotions, positive emotions are going to make a person more ethical and moral. The more good emotions you have, you will be a better person. And if a bureaucrat or a civil servant will harbor negative emotions, like I am angry with others, jealous of others, and uh, not uh, adjustable with others, not uh, uh, contented with others, if I have irritating personality, not ready to be cordial and adjustable with others, then it will create a lot of problems, not only for you, but for the society, but for the entire system. So therefore, in this topic called emotional intelligence, some technical words will come, some scientific terminology will come, the terms used by the psychiatrists, the terms used by psychologists are used in this chapter and certain diagrams are there. You know that in the emotional intelligence, some diagrams are there, flow charts are there, right? And I request you to go through them very neatly. Otherwise, you are not able to answer questions on emotional intelligence if you take it in a general way. And don't write the answer by using the general routine words as far as this chapter is concerned. Chapter 5 is concerned. You need to be very precise specific and technical when you are answering the questions related to emotional intelligence. Then there are uh, general chapters like uh, public service values, right? It is a very general chapter. What are the values of a bureaucrat? If I am an IAS officer, what values I should follow in the administration? If I am an IPS officer, what is my value in the administration? If you are an IRS officer, revenue service, what should be my values in the administration. So these are very general topics, general uh, concepts which you can easily handle. And normally what are the values of the public civil service? You know that. Number one, uh, and uh, here I would like to remember the wonderful concept of uh, former Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, uh, Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu. So when Chandra Babu Naidu became Chief Minister first time uh, in Andhra Pradesh, with his Telugu Desham party, he came out with one beautiful concept of administration. I think most of you will be aware of that. But as a teacher, it is my duty to remind you, the concept is called uh, smart administration. Okay? Smart, I will spell out S-M-A-R-T. The concept of smart administration was introduced in Andhra Pradesh by Chandra Babu Naidu. And what is the meaning of smart? You know, it is a acronym. Each letter will have its long form. Smart doesn't mean that you look nice with the coats, uh, shoot, uh, you know, uh, jacket and all that. Not like that. Smart here means there is a specific meaning. Yes for sincere. Okay. Yes for sincere. M for moral. A for accountable. R for responsive. T for timely. I repeat it once again, S for sincere, M for moral, A for accountable, R for responsive, T for timely. If a bureaucrat will follow these five things, then you can call him as a smart. Or literally, you can call him as a smarter public servant. If our officers, uh, if our, uh, our all India level officers or even group B services officers, are sincere, moral, accountable, 
responsive and timely so that way in this chapter what you are supposed to know is you have to get into uh, these concepts that is what are the concepts of uh, civil servants and how ethics has to be applied in the administration how ethics has to be practically brought in to the uh, corridors of power and those who are running the administration they need to be moral because ethics and integrity are two concepts which are at the roots of administration if the people who are running the administration are immoral unethical and if they are not honest and sincere and if they are not dedicated to the welfare of the people progress of the country development of the nation then the very purpose of for which we run the administration will become meaningless a number of times i'll be telling you uh, in the classroom discussions today in india there are so many officers we are having thousands of ias and ips officers why the scandals are coming out have you ever thought in that line why the scandals are coming out because officers are there but good officers are not there and uh, note the difference there is a difference between an officer and a good officer today india needs good officers not only just mere officers because an officer may be busy with his administration but he may not follow uh, the ethical standards but we have some good officers who have made name like uh, ashok khemka i hope you have heard about him the haryana cadre ias officer ashok khemka khemka not for known for his uh, integrity known for his uh, sincerity known for his uh, honesty and you know that he is so honest that in years in his uh, 23 years of service he has been transferred 28 times right it it was reported in the news 23 years of service uh, this officer is transferred 28 times means you can understand how honest he is wherever he went you know 6 8 months uh, is going to be transferred because he does not compromise he does not compromise on morals he does not compromise on values he does not compromise on principles of good governance that is why these honest officers are always fired in the political circles whatever the ruling party center or state the same story so therefore the point i am telling you is this particular chapter ethics in administration it is a very practical one and you have to go by you have to go by the concept of smart administration uh, introduced by chandra babu naidu long back the first time when he became cm of andhra pradesh this concept was brought in even in karnataka also our chief minister mr s m krishna in 2000 year you know ad he also tried to implement smart concept in the administration when he was chief minister of karnataka uh, in our state so and after this there are two more chapters which are very general again like citizens charter probity in governance that is openness administration is not a secret affair in fact why it is happening so in our country because it is because of the legacy of the british you know when lord curzon was viceroy of india he passed one act known as official secrets act it is called os act official secrets act under which uh, the government authorities need not show any records or files to the public and people do not have any right to ask what is there in the government records so the right to information was completely suppressed curbed by the britishers during the time of lord curzon and unfortunately what happened is after the britishers left also our governments continue to uh, apply this act even after independence even after independence also official secrets act was there and even the first administrative commission report it is called the first arc report which was headed by murarji desai murarji desai was the chairman of first arc administrative commission in india at the central level even they did not remove official secret act saying that it is needed for maintaining security uh, unity integrity of india so many reason they said but in reality what happens is wherever there is secrecy 
there is bound to be misuse of power abuse of power when you give powers to the officers discretionary powers like as given in the official secrets act the officers are likely to misuse the authority likely to use it for their uh, individual advantage rather than for the benefit of the public good or public interest so if you really believe in democracy and act like official secrets act is not right you cannot call this act as a democratic act rather it is a in in against anti uh, to the <coughs> democratic uh, principles so therefore there was a need to repeal this act long time it was there in in india and he, in this context i should remember and also thank dr manmohan singh when he was uh, prime minister of india under upa government in the first leg that is from 2004 to 2009 the first part of the upa government uh, one good thing done by dr manmohan singh ji for which uh, all of us have to be grateful to him thankful to him is the passing of the most important act which is part of your syllabus also and you know what is the act uh, you are aware of that rti act right to information act of 2005 uh, you know passed by upa government manmohan singh government it is a big change in the uh, scenario it's a game changer i call it as a game changer in the governance of this country because for the first time the corridors of power the corridors of power the, uh, the officers of the secretariat the officers of the government officials you know they were kept open for the common people i and you got the right to go and ask a government officer what is there in the file even you can ask your dc you can ask your sp you can ask the chief secretary you can ask the dgp regarding what is being done in the uh, office so you can get information from any file any record excluding excluding the files related with atomic energy space then uh, intelligence uh, defense external affairs and some uh, select subjects the matters before the court If the matter is uh, sub judice before supreme court or high court then you cannot uh, seek the information other than that all general issues of all departments whatever the department central or state p citizens have a right to get the information today right to information is a very very important concept of good governance and it was possible because this act was passed by manmohan singh government and now i want you to go in detail about the rti act please read the act very thoroughly lot of questions will come in the examination on this part only but in the syllabus uh, what title they have given you is probity in the syllabus they mention the word probity in governance probity means openness transparency nothing to hide don't hide anything make everything crystal clear to the people let the people know what is happening in the government and government also should make it known to the people what it is doing so when there is a transparency there is no corruption in fact uh, my teacher used to say uh, why the corruption takes place in the administration because things are shrouded in mystery things are not disclosed to the people that's why secrecy is called the mother of corruption where there is secrecy corruption will take place misuse of authority will take place and if you are really serious to remove corruption please open the things open up the things don't hide anything from the people don't hide anything from the public try to provide all information to the people whether it is government programs or schemes or the list of beneficiaries the amount released by the government the amount they have spent and the way the amount is being collected the way the amount is being distributed lot of issues are there which you are very well aware of that so the crux of the issue is you need to be transparent so don't try to hide because it is not your personal property a government office a government file a government record is not a personal property of an officer it is in the public domain and the a recent update i would like to tell you uh, it will be relevant for you very recently uh, two years ago two years back 
द फॉर्मर चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया रंजन गोगोई जस्टिस रंजन गोगोई रूल्ड इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट दैट इवन ऑफिस ऑफ द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया कम्स विद इन द परव्यू ऑफ आर टी ए एक्ट आई होप यू आर ऑल अवेयर ऑफ दैट इवन द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज नॉट अबव द आर टी आई एक्ट इवन एनी इंफॉर्मेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड फ्रॉम हिज ऑफिस दैट शुड बी गिवन शेयर्ड विद द सिटीजन्स ऑफ दिस कंट्री सो वेन द चीफ जस्टिस हिमसेल्फ कम्स अंडर द आर टी आई एक्ट वॉट अबाउट ऑर्डिनरी ऑफिसर्स हु आर वर्किंग एट द डाउन द लाइन एट द लोअर लेवल्स सो देर फोर द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रॉबर्टी ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड द प्रोविजन्स ऑफ द आर टी आई एक्ट एंड हाउ द आर टी आई एक्ट शुड बी अप्लाइड वट आर द मेरिट्स एंड डीमेरिट्स ऑफ द आर टी आई एक्ट एंड द रीजन्स टू क्रिएट अवेयरनेस अमंग द पीपल ऑन द आर टी आई एक्ट इवन टूडे यू नो दैट एक्ट वॉज पास इन टू थाउजेंड फाइव एंड नाउ वी आर इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू इवन आफ्टर सेवेंटीन इयर्स देर इज नो मच ऑफ अवेयरनेस अमंग द पीपल रिगार्डिंग आर टी आई एक्ट हाउ टू यूज इट हाउ टू अप्लाई फॉर इट हाउ टू सॉलिसिट द इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट ऑफिसर्स इवन टूडे मेनी पीपल आर अफ्रेड ऑफ गोइंग टू ए डी सी ऑफिस एंड गिविंग ऑन अप्लीकेशन अंडर आर टी आई इवन इवन पीपल फील अफ्रेड दैट इफ आई गो टू डी सी ऑफिस फॉर आर टी आई एक्ट वॉट डी सी विल थिंक अबाउट अस वॉट ही विल फील अबाउट अस और विल ही टेक एनी एक्शन अगेंस्ट अस ऑल दीज फैलस थिंग्स फॉल्स थिंग्स फॉल्स अप्रहेंशंस एंड फ्यूअर्स आर स्टिल देयर इन द माइंड्स ऑफ द पीपल मे बी बिकॉज दे आर इलिटरेट मे बी बिकॉज दे आर नॉट एजुकेटेड मे बी बिकॉज दे आर नॉट प्रॉपरली ब्रीफड ऑन द प्रोविजन्स ऑफ द एक्ट एंड ऑन दिस इश्यू यू पीपल हैव टू गो अ लिट डिटेल इन टू इन इट एंड ट्राई टू रीड द प्रोविजन्स ऑफ द आर टी ए एक्ट वेरी क्लियरली इट विल हेल्प यू अर लॉट इन स्कोरिंग मोर मार्क्स इन द एक्सिस पेपर then there is another uh, area which you have to understand is code of conduct citizens charter and code of conduct so there is a concept called code of conduct for the civil servants once you enter into government service how you should behave what a civil servant should do what he should not do in a normal technical uh, uh, language what we say is a set of do's and don'ts what a officer should do what officer should not do there is a clear uh, details are there information is available and once you join into the civil service every officer should follow the civil service rules they are called as the civil indian civil service rules and if you follow the indian civil service rules it is more than enough that you are not going to commit anything uh, moral or immoral or unethical for example one sample example i'll give you a bureaucrat is not supposed to smoke cigarettes a bureaucrat is not supposed to take liquors a bureaucrat is not supposed to go for uh, or what is called uh, horse racing horse racing or um, making uh, playing gambling etc because these are considered as uh, bad virtues they are called as bad values in the society bad habits in the society and they are going to make a, a negative impact on the society on the people and also uh, from the indian societal context uh, i have to make that remark even polygamy and bigamy is prohibited a civil servant is not supposed to have more than one wife more than one family that is called polygamy and bigamy that is not allowed under the code of conduct you are supposed to have one wife and one family which is called monogamy in sociology so in india this is a uh, a cherished value it is a cherished ethical code that you need to uh, live with one wife faithfully and with one family if a bureaucrat will have more than this then it will run into troubles and also it will send a wrong message uh, to the people who approach the office they say that you know our uh, officer himself is not good he is uh, immoral he is unethical uh, you know he has very loose values loose values regarding uh, the family and all that so this this is all the things which you have to keep in mind when you get into the details of code of conduct and you know that every government will have its own code of conduct 
and at the time of joining the government undertaking to the governor or to the president that i declare and hereby say that i will follow the codes of conduct i will not violate the code of conduct and till your retirement from the date of your joining to joining till the date of your retirement please ensure that you follow the codes of ethics the codes of conduct conduct here means good behavior good behavior good character is a must for a bureaucrat because if the bureaucrat himself will have a bad character then how the people will trust you how the public will have faith in the officer right if the officer himself starts lying playing cards making say um, you know drinking liquors and um, say taking some drugs narcotic drugs and all that then how can you uh, people repose faith in the civil service so obviously there are certain things which our employees of both gazetted and non gazetted have to follow irrespective of their personal likes and dislikes right you cannot say that uh, that uh, sir personally i like drinks or personally i like a cigarette okay personally it is go- it may be good i don't deny that uh, to as an individual personally you may like but when you come to office when you are in public life when you are in public life when you are in government office you should not smoke you should not drink liquors you should not take narcotic drugs you should not chew tobacco lot of things are there so a lot of details are there and in that chapter you should be a little a little more perfect precise that what are the codes of conduct codes of ethics that is to be imposed on a civil servant and a very important part here is as it is a code it's not a law it's a code a set of rules it is more moral it is more voluntary on the part of the civil servant it may not be enforceable like any other law any other law like uh, uh, the issues related with fundamental rights uh, in that way but these ethical norms the code of conduct which are prescribed in the government order in in the civil service book manual rules you need to follow it because ultimately your purpose is to give good administration i repeatedly keep on telling the entire summary of the ethics paper is just two words good administration by good officers this is the summary of entire discussion good administration by good officers or good employees if you have bad officers and bad employees you will never get good administration you will never get good governance because good governance is possible only by good officers underline good and here good means ethical good is nothing but ethical moral okay so this is one thing then there is one more uh, important chapter uh, it is not actually a chapter uh, it is an uh, addendum addition added to your syllabus it is called uh, case studies and most of the students get into confusion when they try to solve the questions on uh, case studies and uh, it will fetch more marks it will give you more marks if you are good in answering uh, the case studies given in the question paper and here the guidelines i will give you how to f- solve a case study question now irrespective of the question that the upsc is going to ask you on case studies you remember the parameters the standard yardsticks or parameters on the basis of which you have to answer to a question or a given case study in the question paper so what are those parameters number 1 the first thing you have to check up in the case study is the solution given the solution given in the answer code or in the question asked by the upsc is whether it is moral or not whether it is ethical or not whether it is pro humanity or not whether it is pro society or not whether it is pro community or not whether it is pro nation in the interest of nation or not if it is so if the answer is yes you can say that that decision is justified but if the decision options given there in the case study is uh, is saying no that let us say that it is immoral unethical 
illegal, uh, uh, unconstitutional, anti-national, anti-social. If you feel like that, then you reject that answer. Then it is not your answer. So this is the yardstick that you should keep whenever you are answering the case studies. One small example I will give you before concluding this uh, introductory session. One small example which was asked in the some previous question paper that the question was asked like this. Let us assume that you are a civil service candidate. You are coming for appearing the interview. You are qualified in the means. You are coming for UPSC interview. And uh, on the way you are coming to the UPSC Bhavan, uh, you come across an, a road accident, right? You come across in a road accident and you happen to see that the person is in a very critical stage. But nobody, uh, the passengers going on the road, nobody is attending the uh, victim of the accident. But you feel that you must do something. But at the same time, you are getting late for the interview. Your interview time is very nearby. And if you get uh, stuck up here, you may miss the interview. You cannot attend the interview because your time is very short there. Now, what question UPSC has asked you is what you will do in this situation and they will give you the options so that I will inform the police, I will inform the traffic and I will tell the onlookers on the road that you can take care of this. Uh, some other answers they were given and ultimately you think that uh, my interview time is over and I want to rush to the interview hall. But actually that answer is wrong. What the UPSC appreciated the answer is even if I get delayed to the interview, I will take care of the patient who is in a critical condition and see that first aid is given to the fellow and an ambulance is arranged and inform the authorities like traffic police and all that. See that the patient is shifted to the hospital, hospitalized for emergency uh, treatment, casualty treatment and all that. After doing all that, you have to go to interview. Why? Because the answer given in the UPSC is, uh, is very interesting. A person who is not ready to take care of a uh, road accident victim before becoming officer, what guarantee you have that after he becomes IAS, he will take care of the lives of the millions of people which he will be controlling as an IAS officer. So there, saving the life of the accident victim is more important than attending the interview because your interview is only your personal thing connected to you but uh, saving the life of a person is a real human cause and you may give the justification to the interview panel that why you are late for the interview means you can tell them that on the road there was an accident sir I tried to save that uh, life and made arrangements for that that's why I got late by a few minutes uh, or even few hours but I did not deliberately come late for the interview if you show this concern, I think ethics is practically applied in your life and UPSC will appreciate this kind of answers that you are showing concern. You are not sympathetic, you are empathetic. You know that a bureaucrat should be empathetic and not sympathetic. So that's one sample I told you if this type of case study questions come, how to answer. Okay. So with this, uh, uh, I would like to conclude now saying a very important thing that when uh, uh, tackling ethics and integrity paper, three things are important. Number one, understand the concepts very clearly, technical aspects. Second thing, get into the details of the ideology, theory part of the philosophers, moral thinkers of India and world, take care of them properly, make a proper thorough reading of that. And thirdly, applied part, how ethics is applied in the governance, in the administration at various levels, even in international relations, corporate governance, etc., etc. So look into it properly. And lastly, when you go for case studies, when you are answering for case studies, please stick the answer based on these criteria, whether it is pro-nation, pro-society, pro-humanity, pro-constitution, pro-conscience, then your answer is right. If the answer is no for that, don't take that answer. Okay. With these words, I wish uh, good luck for you in the means examination. Prepare well and give importance in answer writing in a proper way using technical things. If you follow these, uh, uh, you know, what's called the tricks, uh, I can assure you out of 250, you can easily score 130 plus. You can easily score 
130 plus marks in the ethics integrity paper. If you remember these the tips, suggestions I gave you uh, as part of this discussion. So, with this uh, we will end the uh, this particular session on ethics integrity and uh, aptitude and uh, I thank uh, the Akka Academy Bangalore which has arranged this uh, uh, you know uh, 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 video session with the students across India to get uh, an insight. I, I just gave an insight into ethics integrity paper and I hope that uh, it will be really useful and effective for you in the coming means examination. Thank you and I wish you success in the examination.